Well, greetings and salutations. I've been working on this whole uh, exporting models. <clears throat> well, starting the models off here in Magic of Voxel and uh, then going into Blender, putting them into different pieces and animating them here in Blender because we can use these nice keyframes and um, basically do some really fun stuff. Uh, and have it then re-exported back out into Magic of Voxel. So it, we've got all these different pieces of body parts, back parts, armor pieces, and they all get compiled into one end ending uh, um, a, a model, basically. It's compiling a model from, from pieces and based on animation data in Blender. So I've been working on this. I've been covering this in many videos lately. Um, but what I did recently was something that um, really is going to help make animating these characters a lot faster in Blender. Um, now I've got it so everything is parented to something else. So, well, starting with the hips. The hips are where everything else pivots from. So if I go ahead and move the hips, it moves the entire body, right? And if I go and move just the upper arm, for example, um, it moves the the lower arm as well. So everything that's underneath, everything that's a child of something else is moved if that parent is moved as well. So this lower arm is a child of the upper arm and that allows it to move like that. I explored using bones, right? The first idea I had was like, all right, this really should be, these all should be bones and I should make that up, up the character using bones and that way there could be inverse kinematics in certain ways and stuff like that but the problem is it gets complicated quite fast but that's not the, really the problem the real problem is that it's um it's just not as good for this voxel art this style that i'm going for i really want this thing this to be pixel perfect stuff right or voxel perfect i guess you could say and um having bones kind of messes things up because what bones are meant to do is move lots of vertices at once right not these not these simple blocky cubes that you get in voxel art uh in with with uh if i were to attach a bone for example to this upper arm and have a and then have another bone here for the lower arm and then i were to go and twist that around and pose it um, with some rotations and translations and all that, what's going to happen is you're going to get these little tiny uh, bits of vertices that sort of stretch and look all weird, and they're no longer cubes. They're no longer voxels because they've been stretched according to the bone and its movement. I um, mean, of course, you can go and go and, like, repaint all the weights for a bone and make it so a a bone won't be affected or a, a section of... A, of uh, the character it wouldn't be affected by the bone at all if it moves but they it's just too complicated right but then I discovered this whole parenting thing and it's really neat so basically in, in blender you can set something to be the child of something else or something could be the parent of something else and um, as long as you have it all set up right um, it works really nicely it's it works really really nicely for the for this voxel art style especially that I'm going for see this if I move like just this upper upper body right there moves everything else along with it same thing with rotations if we were to go here and rotate this character's arm right here you can see it's already rotated for this these keyframes but if I were to let's just rotate something else actually let's rotate the back or no let's rotate the, the upper piece of the back here um, right it see it moves the lower piece of the back as well um, and if I were to go and move rotate uh, the whole head See, the eyes and the hair move as well. So that is going to be really helpful when I go and set up animations. Like this animation right here, uh, this is what, idle A. Let's not save those changes. Here's the idle animation that I have before, right? This is kind of cheesy. I actually it looked a lot better, and then I read it really quickly, and it kind of looks cheesy right now. But um, the whole point is that this was all set up before I had discovered the whole parenting system, right? So I'll have to go and redo this, but it's a lot faster now that I have, now that I can uh, move one piece of, like, for example, just move the upper arm and it moves the lower arm as well. Um, it makes animating in Blender a lot faster and a lot simpler. So with all that said, 
Um, here is how, here's what it looks like so far with the model exporter. So it takes all the pieces of the model, imports the Blender file, parses the Blender file, parses all the animations in the Blender file and all that, and then goes and recompiles everything, puts it out here into this, um, into a cache folder within Magic of Voxel. I just realized I don't have Keycaster on. Um, so here's what, here's like, there's frame zero of this player rig. So this player rig um, I is not meant to be animated, but I just animated it anyways so I could debug it. Um, so we can see that, that basically the animation that we're going for here is just it's just lifting up his right arm, and at the end there he sort of like squeezes his lower arm a little bit and then puts it back down. So that's what we're seeing here. It's I've only got to export 10 frames per second, but this can go as high as I want, right? I can make this 100 frames a second export. And uh, here's frame zero, here's frame 10, Here's frame 20, but something's going wrong. It's not quite rotating that his lower arm at the last bit, which probably has something to do with my math. Um, and here, let's take a look at some of that math. Um, it's basically, it's basically aggregating. There's a lot to this whole, all this math that has to happen. But because of this new parenting I've been doing with, um, with the, you know, like this lower arm being the, the child of this upper arm. Um, it has to go and translate. Th see this in uh, in Blender, the lower arm has a position of z negative 0.5, and um, this actually where it's at in at, that's relative, right? This is relative to its upper arm. In absolute space, that's more like 1.2 or something like that. So the math has to go and aggregate all of the um, transforms, and here's where it's actually actually aggregating those transforms. It's just adding the rotation from the parent multiplying by the parent scale, rotating by the parent's rotation, and then adding in the parent frame's translation. Uh, but there's probably something quite a little bit wrong there, which is you know being shown by this whole bug here with this uh, lower arm not quite being where it should be. This, this, this part of the animation, this should be frame 20 right there, where this lower arm is kind of twisted like that. So something's weird. <laughs> look, at, look how crazy that looks with the sword going through his head. Ah! Um, so that's great. Um, that's where I'm at right now. This is uh, almost finished. Basically, this whole this whole process of importing animations from Blender, and I'm really happy with things how they've turned out. Um, there's one issue sometimes. Let's take a look at what happens sometimes when you rotate rotate things by say like a 45 degree angle. We'll see an empty voxel where there really should be a full voxel. Like I just deleted that voxel right there. So what I'm thinking I can do is create some sort of algorithm. That takes a look at, oops, um, takes a look at what uh, what so when a when a certain voxel is rotated, for example, all of the um, all of the voxels here in this upper right arm are rotated to a ninety degree angle in this rotation. If it were something like a forty five, um, it would look weird and would have the that gap like right there, for example. Uh, but so what I could do is take the this is the algorithm idea I have is to take uh, take a look at the voxel before it's moved and count the surrounding voxels uh, in all the three dimensional space so all nine voxels surrounding it count all them up see which ones it's actually being surrounded by and then rotate it and then determine hey um, do we still have the that same number of surrounding voxels if not let's vote for adding a voxel somewhere so for example if Let's see, uh, this voxel right here, this one I just painted yellow, um, if it were rotated to this point and it doesn't have that voxel beneath it, it would vote for like, hey, this voxel beneath me should be filled in. And then this voxel right here should be like, hey, this one right here should be also filled in. So this, in this case right here, if this voxel were missing, there would be four other voxels, maybe more, five or six even, that vote for, the, for, for being, there's being a voxel right here. So then my algorithm could go and fill in and add a voxel right there, and it wouldn't look as uh, as weird and mangled. So that's the idea there to get that looking really good. And um, it, and besides, it's not really that noticeable once you once you put this into Wraithbinder, into Wraithbinder's uh, visual engine. Is this even gonna run? Yeah, okay, I'm in the right folder. Um, it's you can barely even tell. Right, this is actually the old, no, that's actually the new animation, the new idol. Yeah, that's being exported or compiled. It's a, it's a compiled model, but everything else, like this running animation is not yet compiled. 
I haven't done a blender model for that yet. Uh, so lots of progress being made and this what this is going to really do is it's going to make all of the animations so much faster and easier to accomplish when they're all in blender like this rather than basically my old method was to use a file called animations.txt and go and manually animate every single body piece for every single animation and that's just not as sustainable of a process it's also not as quick of a process once i've got the process down here in blender of animating uh, which I pretty much do at this point, it's it's going to save so much time. And what's also going to save a ton of time with this video game is the fact that I could go and create a whole bunch of different things like swords and axes and um, let's look at some of these weapons. Like we've got, you know, like here's a sword. There's kind of like a katana sword. There's, there's a short sword. Here's an axe. There's like another axe and there's a spear. Right? All of these don't have to be animated for hundreds and maybe even thousands of frames, right? In Songbringer, for every single character, I always had to pixel art, repixel art everything. And this is so cool because I, I can draw a weapon once and have everything, have it animated completely in Blender and, and, uh, and my own code in, and, uh, and not have to go and, and like voxel up a whole bunch of different the um, animations per frame and also it can be 60 frames a second instead of 10 frames a second so this is a huge thing because this in Wraithbinder I want you to be able to totally customize your character have completely different legs and arms and hips and hair and weapons and everything so that's why that's the whole meaning behind all this is that you'll be able to really customize your character and have something really unique and it'll be part of the reward system you'll be earning um, some sort of currency in matches and then going and spending it out of matches to earn, to buy different weapons and armor and stuff like that. So it's a really big part of Wraithbinder. So I'm glad this is all getting done and uh, one more step along the way. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and um, we'll catch you all next time, right? See ya!